on the Parmenides is now available in English, out, translated by... What is Dylan, John Dylan? John Dylan. Same chance. Right, we did the metal plate in this that volume. And it's available in the Bollinger Press. You did the Iambicus Mysteries volume, too. Mm -hmm. And it's by what press? Bollinger. Bollinger. Pantheon Press. Bollinger Series. Well, I was told that it was supposed to come out in June. So, Procolis we'll commentary in. on the coming. Okay. What was the one we had, Procolis? Elements, Elements of the Elements of the No. No, yeah. we have that one, but no, we got another. We got. Uh, uh, Providence. Uh, Providence. Providence, yeah, Providence and the you Nature of Evil. Right yeah. yeah, all of that stuff uh, is over. in this Just edition here. Yeah. The you. one that I, I quoted, this is the Thomas Taylor edition that they're offering. Yeah, this is by Thomas this Taylor. Price. This includes the six <coughs> books of Proclus, the seventh book added by Taylor, the complete elements of theology, wow. and the three works on Providence. Uh, wow. Also. That's all in there. That's all of Thomas's? Yeah, that, that's what... That's what that is. It's the same thing as what you and I have here, except it's now, yeah, for those prices. That's what they say. It's, they say it's Thomas Taylor's, and that's what yeah. we have here. Correct. So, if it turns out to be something that we want to do. You can get a scholar or student discount, too. Uh oh. You can get it for $18. It We're all. Does it doesn't matter if you're a, a scholar or a student? Well, it doesn't say scholar slash student now, so. I wonder who else would be buying it but a scholar slash student. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm going to leave this volume up here for those of you who want to check on the other chapter headings. And, uh, certainly would you agree at this evening we might as well jump in. I would suspect one, three, seven, since very few people are likely to be interested in five. <laughs> All right, five. <laughs> there? Let's do it. Let's do it. So, since it's the first time we're in, all right, we're all starting at the same time, which is immediately. Yeah, I started with three, and I figured I'm going to get into change and how to make change. And I said, oh, I'm going to get four. Three and five. <laughs> Should use checks, and you can take off your income tax credit. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So when you think as long as we get a receipt with the Poetic Society seal of approval for our tax, yeah. Rod, do you want to play a role in, in, in play tonight? Because no, you've done some very fine work in this. So. No, I like to just, I'll read. All right. By heavens, don't say no. Unless somebody else wants to read, no, no, no. They would switch off, right? Great. Okay. Uh, Sheena, do you have an extra pen? Uh, <laughs> no, to say that. No, no. Wait a minute. The Carol, you have a pen? Wait a minute. handy to have a dictionary. <laughs> you know, I forgot I, to bring I, one. Oh, sure. Pick a color, any color. Those are colors, though. Those oh, that's colors. all right. Look here, they write, don't they? Barbara? I don't see what's it. I got a piece of it. It's a good dictionary. Gina? Yeah. Great, thank you. Well, there's some words that come up. At least it doesn't have the 18th century printing. Yeah, that's funny. F, 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 F
who after these following this divine choir have energized about the doctrines of Plato with a divinely inspired mind. From these he, who after the gods has been our leader to everything beautiful and good, receiving in an undefiled manner the most genuine and pure light, pure light of truth in the bosom of his soul, made us a partaker of all the rest of Plato's philosophy, communicated to us that arcane information which he had received from those more ancient than himself, and caused us in conjunction with him to be divinely agitated about the mystic truth of divine concerns. To this man, therefore, should we undertake to return thanks adequate to the benefits which we have received from him. The whole of time would not suffice, would not be sufficient. But if it is necessary, not only that we should have received from others the transcendent good of the Platonic philosophy, but that we should leave to posterity monuments of those blessed spectacles of which we have been spectators and emulators to the utmost of our ability, under a leader the most perfect of the present time, and who arrived at the summit of philosophy, perhaps we shall act properly in invoking the gods that they will enkindle the light of the truth in our soul, and in supplicating the attendants and ministers of better natures to direct our intellect and lead it to the all-perfect, divine, and elevated end of the Platonic theory. For I think that everywhere he who partakes in the least degree of intelligence will begin his undertakings from the gods, and especially in explications respecting the gods we can no otherwise be able to understand a divine nature than by being perfected through the light of the gods, nor divulge it to others unless governed by them and exempt from multiform opinions and the variety which subsists in words, preserving at the same time the interpretation, interpretation of divine names. Therefore, knowing, therefore, this and complying with the exhortation of the Platonic Timaeus, we in the first place establish the gods as the leaders of the doctrine of respecting themselves. But, we, but may they, in consequence of hearing our prayers, be propitious to us and benignly approaching, guide the intellect of our soul and lead it about the Vesta of Plato and to the arduous sublimities of this speculation, where, when arrived, we shall receive all the truth concerning them and shall obtain the best end of our parturient conceptions of divine concerns, desiring to know something respecting them, inquiring about them of others, and at the same time, as far as we are able, exploring them ourselves. Did we just perfectly obvious? Oh, yeah. <coughs> the one is already finished the book. The uh, first sentence is pretty interesting. Just a propitious pro progression. Yeah. There's the document as well. But he's positioning it in a very interesting way when you consider the fact that Christianity is existing at the same time.
if you take it just in terms of the integer in the first sentence, what do you have? We have supernatures unfolding to Plato, right? That's right. And then Plato unfolding. Right. And it went to Plotinus, and Plotinus it went on and on. And on. But in the first sentence. Huh. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? Superior natures. Intellect concealed. Them. And what happens with these superior natures? <coughs> no, they have. They have what? Intellect. They have intellect. What are they doing with it? Exhibiting. Huh? It's, it's and intellect and functioning. functioning right? They're exhibiting it and through Plato. Through, through Plato's work. Can I ask a question about something I really don't understand? There's one more. And then it goes back. Yeah, it goes back. They're doing it to the soul's conversion to the generation. Yeah, what's that mean? Living in the body, I guess, huh? Being in space. Yeah, but, there's a, being but the reason for it is coming. a perfecting. I mean, they're both toxic. Because it after it says afterwards having per, received its perfection returning into itself, it's like it's a perfecting. And the people who are they're denying, you know, it's an act of will. Yeah. Therefore, it's a what do you call that? It's a theological of their nature. It's revelation. It's revelation. It's revelation. It's revelation though of intellect. It's a revelation of intellect. Not merely the will of God, right? It's the revelation of intellect by a, by an act of will. Well, wouldn't that be the will of God, too? No. You, the ways of God can still be inscrutable, even though He may have a great will. Right? Will just does what? It just indicates that it's a conscious act. Doesn't give context. Doesn't give it. Doesn't necessarily give context. That means it's like something you do. <coughs> purposeful. Yeah, purposeful. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, let's do it again.
He did it in the intellect concealed in them. Now we understand the intellect of superior nature. And the truth right. and subsisting together with beings. Right, I, I presume should be a capital B. Right? Yeah. Hmm? What? Hmm. To a special class of people? Mm -hmm. To souls conversant with generation. You know, that conversant with generation is playing on the, the Latin. It actually means turned towards generation. It's that nice image of the, of the soul. That term is um, mm -hmm. turning, turning the souls that have turned themselves towards generation. Conversant yeah. is the Latin name. If you take if you take the uh, parentheses in there to explain that, then we're going to have to look at what he means. Mm -hmm. right, a little more carefully, should we not? <coughs> it doesn't fit. That they would be turned towards. Well, being and that. No, turn towards generation. Turn towards generation. So far as that is lawful for them to participate of such supernatural and mighty good. At that time when they're uh, participating of it, they couldn't be turned towards generation. Yeah. Yeah. All of the men are in degree. Mm -hmm. Pardon? All of the men are in degree of their conversiveness. Yeah. So if, if a greater turns elect participation with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have the Greek, Barbara? Yeah. Good. Right, what's it look like then? Or Rod, if you've done this? No, Sarah's got Sorry? Greek, so. What would you do with generation, Sarah? Because yeah. that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But if you take your teeth in the parentheses, it does. <coughs> could be not necessarily genera generation. Could be the first. Should be this. Could be this the first a, thing. This generated. is a generation. It wouldn't. Yeah. I, I this don't is think a generation. It would be absolutely. It's not generation in terms of existence. Of, uh, right. I don't think we'll have right. That. Right. Right. That's better. Think what? Like generation of the symposium. Well, this is a generation. Yeah. This is a coming down. On the other hand, here could it be like in the Phaedrus, where certain souls are more capable of partaking of the region and certain souls are less capable? I think that's the point he's making. I do, yes. The question then would be, to what does this word point, generation? generation. Actually, it means the origin, the source. Yeah, that's Did better. That? Understand the source changes, right? Then it fits. Mm -hmm. See, because mm -hmm. then, to that degree to which these beings, these souls, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. participate in this thing, it's just said to be good. Ah, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. What's the Greek word? Genesis. It oh, doesn't necessarily genesis. mean generation. Here, it, in fact, generation is not even one of the given meanings. Well, then that makes sense with, as to what is in the parentheses, too. Yeah, right, right. Okay, and again... Right, having received this perfection, there's a return. So the intellect returns? Yeah. Sure, intellect. And again, that after is having received its perfection, returning, as it were, into itself, becoming <laughs> unapparent to many, the best of the philosophers, and was earnestly to, do, to engage in the investigation of true being, but again advanced into life. Right? Therefore, this is a study 
goal, advancing into the light, which is another word for true being. True being, idea of the good, mm -hmm. true life. One heck of an opening sentence. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of positioning, isn't it? Who are the superior natures? This stuff was being read in the 10th century and it caused a big stir. And uh, it was being read at the court in, in uh, Constantinople with the Catholics all over the place. Oh, that'd be kind they of They had to bring in the Jesuits. Too. Sure. Well, that is that when Popery was writing. <laughs> Tenth century, that would be. And this was five hundred years 500 after this was written. They were still reading this and really bugged the Christians. Well, you can see, you can see why the opening paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't do that. Well, because Jesus Christ, <coughs> the, the coming of Jesus Christ in Christianity, did not reveal the intellect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Personal saying there. Personal saying. Based upon what? What was that word again? Faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Belief. Mm -hmm. Belief and faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one heck of an interesting opening sentence. What did the it uh, refer to in that? Is it perfection? Is and again, that afterwards having received its perfection, returning as it were into itself? Yeah, why don't you pick it up and, and who? Mm -hmm. Afterwards, having received its perfection. And again, that after it's having received its perfection, returning yeah. Yeah, to... Who would that be? Keep, what, keep the subject. The well, well, it beings. could either go to the souls. It could be the souls conversing with the source. Okay. Right. And again, and afterwards having received its perfection, returning as it were into itself, and mm -hmm. coming on a parent journey to profess to philosophize. Now, what would be the soul? Well, let's line up the possibility. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're returning into themselves. Two souls. Um, well, the light. And they would be Unless it's the, what we suggest but the will, the innocent will. They're exhibiting the nature to the souls conversant with the souls. Well, that whole thing is to something, isn't it? It's to the souls conversant with the source. Right? The whole thing. That's where it stops. Right. right. Mm -hmm. well, that's where it then it has to return from there. And now we have a return. Right. So whatever it is, <coughs> there, there's a consequence. There's a perfecting one. Right, mm -hmm. a perfection, a consequence, a perfection. Mm -hmm. About the intellect concealed in that. It's the life that does it. Huh? It starts with the light. Oh. It's, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the light, too. It starts with yeah, the light. Yeah, it's the light, too. It it's what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's what's happening to them. See, it seems that yeah, it was it first it. unfolded into the light. Right. Through the... Mm -hmm. And then again, the last part of the sentence. It advances yeah. into it. Again, it advances. Yeah, really, that's right. Right, it's like... Yeah. It says that it's whenever these beings come out, you know, then the light comes out. Mm -hmm. It's like the, when these people want it, it, it happens. It again advances into the body. So far as it's lost, it's Yeah. Well, 
it's just dances into, and it's really going away. Earnest desire. It goes to. Yeah. Yeah. Return. Return. When there's an earnest desire to engage in the investigation of the true being, it comes out again. Are you still trying to find out what the return is receiving its perfection and returning to itself? Yes. I think it the it's the philosophy of play out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Which is going to be in people. Okay. Doesn't? Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. uh would you agree that there's a parallel between the part that precedes the semicolon and then what's after? The parallel being, or, or the distinction, I should say, before we talk about parallel. The soul is conversant with the source, and and those who uh, and become unapparent to many who profess to philosophize. Those conversant with the source. Oh, I see. And those who don't. Mm-hmm. So it, it, two it, types. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those who do, those who don't. So it's going to th- those are going to be blind to it who are not. Mm-hmm. They're not going to see it. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then the who. And who's the who then? Those who receive, those receive its perfection. Yeah. Right. Well, the soul's conversant. Yeah, after returning to self, it became unapparent to those who professed to philosophize. Yeah, they dropped out. And who earnestly desired to engage in the begest, in the investigation of true being, it again advanced into the light. Now, wouldn't that be those later guys like? Like these guys, like uh, Propolis? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the people he's writing for. It came out again. It keeps returning when there's someone earnestly desiring to engage in the investigation of true being. That seems to be the call. <laughs> it's right in the chest. Its perfection be the perfection that follows from the mastery of the philosophy of Plato? Which then it means participating in the intellect and the superior nature. Are you saying it's the participation of supernatural and mighty good? Well, or is it the philosophy of Plato that went through a perfecting. I see this is a this is a, this is an intellect, huh? This shows the intellect. This produces the awakening of the intellect. It's not thinking. The new, right? It's, it's that high stuff. It's not opinion, what we call intellect. The high stuff. Right. So the intellect is disclosing, it flows itself through this work. That brings about this phenomenon. But what does this phenomenon do? Doesn't it 
cause it to turn upon itself? Mm -hmm. And isn't that a perfection? Well, this is that curious doctrine that holds that the uh, superior natures or being to some degree gets to know itself through the souls of men who perceive the nature yeah. of the divine. Right? That's the free turning upon itself. Right? Then, it becomes, then it becomes aware of itself in that respect through the beings who in fact do it. Which is why He's smiling. Yeah. It's real friendly. <laughs> See, look at the way he does the next sentence. But I particularly think that the mystic doctrine respecting divine concerns, which is purely established on a sacred foundation, and which perpetually subsists with the gods themselves. So this doctrine is the unfoldment of the intellect. The intellect is being disclosed. Therefore, the doctrine itself subsists with the gods themselves. Actually. Became hence apparent to such as are capable of enjoying it for the time. in that process, isn't it? It's like philosophy and the intellect now have a separate, like they embody it, they embody it, and it, it exists in its own right. as a result of Plato, according to his last sentence, it appears likewise to me that the whole place became splendid, and that illuminations of divine spectacles everywhere presented themselves to you. And that's a well-lit place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he went, so was it Plato who had the certain true priest? Um, are you in, but this philosophy shown for it? Yeah. From him, so so it was him, as if established the sacred temples of being unknown to many of them. And in certain orderly periods of time, proceeded as much as was possible for it and to life. Mm -hmm. through certain true priests 
and who embrace a lot of corresponding traditional symptomistic concern. But Plato did those two things. Yeah, that's the uh, Mino. That part of the Mino. Mm -hmm. That whole doctrine of recollection is said to come from priests and priestesses mm -hmm. who reason about these things. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would come from the symposium too. Yeah. Priests and priestesses. So it's a whole tradition. Well, there's sure a lot of music out there in the kitchen. <laughs> the ladies are singing. <clears throat> right, he says, hey, I'll, I'll name off some good commentaries. Plotinus, Amelius, Porphyry, Iamblichus, Theodorus. Not a bad list after reading commentaries. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> intended as an interior for the nation or just literary. Well, he said pure light of truth in the bosom of his soul. That sounds interior, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Page three. participates in the least degree of intelligence will begin his undertakings from the gods, and especially in expectation of respecting the gods. For we can no wise be able to understand the divine nature than by being perfected through the light of the gods. It's the idea of the good. Of being. nor divulge it to others unless governed by them. Right? You're either in that line or you're not. Therefore exempt from the opinions and vagaries of men. First sentence, similar to the way the grammar appears in the first sentence in English. Huh? Is the grammar similar to the first sentence? Oh, is it simpler in the Greek? Are the points that you were raising resolvable in the Greek? Not simple. Huh? It wasn't not simple to me. What are the 
Yeah. Yeah. After the semicolon. And again, that afterwards having received its perfection, mm -hmm. returning as it were into itself and feeling. Mm -hmm. It's the last phrase, it again advanced into life. That it is, what's the reference of that last it? Oh, it's not becoming intelligent. What did, Rod, what you? Oh, I'm just encouraging my colleague here to use the uh, faculty. Great. Yeah. Please, and more. Got to take a little prodding. Good, 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 there, good, you know. good, good. Ah, my friends like this, we don't have any problem. <laughs> just get them all into Greek and we'll benefit by it. <laughs> Well, would you not agree that that first chapter of Book One is pretty ambitious? <laughs> first sentence. First book seven. <laughs> Sarah says it's all the same subject. She's whispering to me over here on the side. What is the it? What is the, the it is the philosophy of Plato. I've heard it said it's feminine, it goes back to there. I, I'm, these things I don't want to know myself. I can really report them. And that's I, also what was whispered on. What's important is the end of the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds pretty good. Is that not important? Mm -hmm. It's first, that. At first. Which, uh, having received this perfection, it again, it has to fly up to the same thing. Received perfection with the whole Plato's philosophy received perfection. It's difficult. It's a little proposition. But it's. Um, Not the kind of Greek you play around life, anyway. Right. It's very different. It's not the kind you play with. It's, it's, not, with it. it's not like Plato. It's different. It's much more, much tighter. Much tighter. Much tighter. It's not Plato. It's so lyrical. So you can you can you can follow what he's saying in Greek, in Hebrew, and in English. Mm -hmm. Sometimes easier. But this is so many participial phrases. And uh, long drawn out periods, which turn out to be nothing but part of the little phrase. But David, couldn't you say just in that first section that it's all one thing that accuses of thing of construction just in that first section? Heck, long thought, right. But it's no need, though. Hobbeson came philosophia, heck, long thought, and then there's the other. Okay, I'll do the, 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 the and then the text came. There's a there's a there's a phrase in the, between the commas, and then there's the um, but then there's I I would put some text name with it. Well, I see you're and then you're you the a thing on with it, and the pro L thing at the end. At least those I would put up to that high period. I would put with those at the end. Okay. And that's what I thought his question was. What was that Crowell thing? Was subject to Crowell thing? Hmm. I, I think we'll find that first question. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would almost be willing to agree with you if I was actually. Thank you. I would almost be willing. I mean, that's certainly a strong possibility. Come in and look and agree with me or refute me, so now I don't have to sit here feeling insecure. <laughs> No, you don't have to do that. <laughs> and then agree with me or tell me I'm wrong. No. The intellect? So look, look at... See, I think... I assume it for the moment, all right? Let's, let's accept it. Yeah, mm -hmm. philosophy of Plato. All right. Therefore, what is he saying about the philosophy of Plato? <clears throat> what, put all the attributes on it now. 
It was first unfolded. It was first unfolded right through the light. It what? It was first unfolded through the through the beneficent will of the gods. Okay. Then no. see. <laughs> then we're not talking. About it. Yeah. The Pardon? The content of the philosophy and where it resides. Yeah. Then it has an it has an existence. It's, it's very interesting. He's purporting that it has a certain kind of existence, which is quite amazing. There's a power behind it. Look at that power. Behind yeah. It. <laughs> and look what it does in that first sentence. Then. Mm -hmm. All right. Exhibiting the. Incident. Yeah. Why don't you read it? Tell us. Why don't you read it? Says <clears throat> I'm of the opinion that the whole philosophy of Plato was at first unfolded into light through the beneficent will. Of superior natures. Okay. Hey, the whole thing has a divine nature, mm -hmm. yeah. divine origin, and it still is divine. It's mm -hmm. not merely that it has divine source. Yeah. 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 Exhibiting the intellect concealed in them. Right. Then Plato exhibits the intellect of the superior being. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Two souls, now this is who it's going to. Right, it's going to the two souls conversant with the source. Those nature. The source. The source. The source. The source. Right, then it's, a, it's open only to a, to a certain class of people. Go ahead. Right. Why isn't it souls that are in the body, that like you and me? Why is it, you know? I don't know why it isn't. How can you rule out generation as to that? Well, why can't it be souls that are in the body? No, I don't think anything could close to it. <laughs> Conversant? No. It says to generation. To souls conversant with with the source. I, 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 I thought that would, that would be change that with Barbara to source. Well, yeah, yeah but that's that's an article. I don't think it's a print. In Barbara's that resolve the principle you say go to source and not generation. According to the lexicon. Is that David, do you think that's well, well, I have Tice, Griff, Omanai, Perry, and Ethan. Two souls. Graphomanai, which is our turning, turning towards, our, our to go, uh, turning uh, about whatever this genesis is. Conver conversant, yeah, conversant about genesis. Right, that's no, well, what's, okay, conversant about genesis, and genesis is? It's going to be a big difference. It doesn't give forward. generation here. Gene goes to generation. This is genesis. Genesis would give source, origin. Well, isn't that the word we get Genesis from? It, it may be the word we get Genesis from, but it doesn't it mean that the idea. Greek has, means generation. Mm. What makes you think it has to deal with the body? It doesn't well, mean that. So why would it mean that it, why would we keep the word in its pure meaning? Well, I don't know, I give it the English. Isn't the that's what I'm saying. No, that's what I'm telling you. I'm reading you directly. This, mm -hmm. the, the way this so stuff is say I thought Genesis was the, the beginning. That doesn't mean they have the same meaning. The Genesis isn't the beginning. Well, source, 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 source. Yeah, is yeah but then, so in terms of the context and what follows in our parenthesis, mm -hmm. we can use mm -hmm. the word source and it can make more sense than the use of the word generation. That's one value to it. Because at this point, these are the people who understand the source. The source would be the supreme nature. Mm -hmm. Right? Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it wasn't, it looks like it kind of comes out of the unfolding of the unfolding. Right? We play with it. Don't, don't, uh, don't solidify it. Okay. Into the genesis of it. Yeah, I'm at least I was thinking that it's a history of philosophy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've come a little bit. All right, no, when I can just... And again, yeah. yeah, then we're here. God. That afterwards, having received its perfection, returning as it were. Okay, now look here. Itself. What's getting the perfection? Well, there. I kind of felt like it was Plato's philosophy. Okay, then if it is it getting perfection, is it becoming perfected? That's what I kind of felt. And then it wasn't perfected when it had its right. source with the supreme nature. That doesn't make sense, though, in a way. Or, or these beings. Yeah, right. 
Yeah, that that could be a perfection. No, it's why would the why would the being why would the supreme natures back something that wasn't perfect? But you say all we have to do as readers is to line up all the possibilities that can exist with the best and the tightest reason, and then turn it over to someone who wants to look at the source. The truth. Yeah. Then obviously they should be able to settle it on a grammatical principle. Ideally, but it works out that way. Now it's quite another thing. All right, so the question, what's being perfected there? You see, the you reason, agree there's two. They yeah. can either be, mm -hmm. either be Plato yeah. or the souls. Well, the reason I, if we read along a little and try to put the souls in there, the souls it doesn't it. seem to fit. But it's, and again, that afterwards, having received you know, this perfection, returning as it were into itself. Now, let's yeah. say the souls. Or, the souls see, themselves. do both, see? Okay. Or, see, the, or it's the... Philosophy that the turns, philosophy returns, it returns itself. into itself and becoming unapparent to many who profess to philosophize. All right, these are the dudes over here who aren't with it. Okay. okay, now is it the souls that are going to appear unapparent or is it going to be the philosophy that appears unapparent? It's going to be the philosophy that's unapparent to these souls. Right. We got that, I hope. Okay, but isn't that in the same, isn't that the same subject as what was right before it? And our decision whether or not it's the souls or Plato's philosophy? Yeah, okay. I don't want to decide. I want to see if we can trace all the possibilities. Okay. I don't see him taking on another thought there. Okay. No. All right. Then we go then? Okay, let's we'll keep going. Well, which, no, you can't keep going at this point. Mm -hmm. None of the principles that Bill's is put for because if he sees the same subject no matter where you put them, You've got a dual subject there. That's right. You're taking on a parent to be philosophy yeah. and perfection to be the soul, so you can't go ahead. That's quite true, Rob. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying that there are two possible ways of going. We want to line them both up. Okay, well, then, well I was just saying you can't go ahead as long as they're split. You have to. If you use my, if, if, if you use my reasoning, yeah. but if he can have my reasoning, he can have a consistent view. There can be another one that's yeah. consistent, both from the text, mm -hmm. and we just want to indicate them. You're saying at that point, then you want to move over to the grammar to see whether it can be resolved one or the other. That's all. Yeah. And I'm saying, that's not to decide. Yeah, we get four cases. Yes, because it can be either way or both. Two both. Yeah, two both. Yeah. Either or. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and who earnestly desire to see, I'm back up, and becoming unapparent to many who profess to philosophize, and who earnestly desired to engage in the investigation of true being, it again advanced into light. Now you got a who. Mm -hmm. right. If the who refers to people, you got these possibilities. Mm -hmm. Well, I think. But one who, quality. I think who's are peoples. All right. So hold on. Okay. And then I think it is Plato's philosophy that comes back into the light to perfect those. Who's? Yeah, okay, fine, fine. In other words, look, we can spell them all out as a whole and a whole and a whole. Huh? Then, then you leave it and you say, hey, Barbara, Simon, David, anyone else who wants to play? All right, let's see what you can do on the simplest level to line up the possibilities and let's see what happens when you do it. <coughs> may, may, right? Because they're all interesting. Mm -hmm. We can't lose with any of them. Now look here, maybe what we need to know is what a uh, theologist really is. Maybe that'll help us. Especially for those of you who have an interest in the first house values. I saw someone out there with a cup of coffee, so I'm just going to see what they go bad. Yeah. <laughs> Turn all brown. Yeah. Get fried coffee after a while. Yeah. Back for the third time. Oh, by the way, kind of now. I ordered ten copies of the Zen training book. Oh, good. Paid for by the NS group. So I'll get the copies. If you guys want the copies paid. Is that from Hawaii? The Zen training book. I never, never looked. I, I don't know whether it comes to the university. I'll take it. I'm going to take it.
When I get it, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll be around it for you. Twenty-two dollars or something like that. Rounded figures are worth about. So in any case, it's a brilliant book, really good. Mark has already commented on it, does it have saying how well it represents does it have modern the, uh, phenomenology. Yeah. Ten oxen? Yes, that's the ten oxen. That's your quote of the book. I think I have a quote of the book. Of that book? I don't. It's called Ten Oxen. I don't. Since it's so new. Why? But you might. Let's see. What can I? What can I bet on this? <laughs> it sounds like a winner. What's it? What has it started? I got it from someone we know. And you got it. Got it from Sandy. Could very well be now. Yeah, that, uh, uh, breathing, uh, breathing, calling out Samadhi. Um, I don't know. No. Okay, 12 o'clock. We don't want to work overtime, do we? Oh. <laughs> we started at 11.30. Um, Good guy. All right. Well, break a whole precedent that I've carefully established over the years. And they're sitting at 5.30 tomorrow morning. Gosh. Where? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's a fair It's interesting to see the grammatical how people would talk about that grammatical. Yeah, that's the point we're making. Fourth page are we on? Six. Page six on the theology. Chapter three. Right of. Are we going on from there? Or is it twelve? Page six. <laughs> I'll do that again. Are we going on from there or is it twelve o'clock? It's 12 o'clock. We haven't had going on. But since we started uh, at 11.30, okay. we should at least plunge ahead for a couple more pages. Oh. Well, I'll read if... Uh, Great. Let somebody else... Oh, I don't hear me. Read on a lot. All therefore that have ever touched upon theology have called... Where are you reading? Page six. Chapter three. Chapter three. All there. <laughs> 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 it was an even number. Well, you get all the different ways of, that you can talk about it. That's odd. We can do that tonight after we leave. Yeah. Salt ready, Jesus? All therefore that have ever touched upon theology have called things first according to nature God. And have said that the theological science is conversant about these. And some indeed have considered a corporeal essence as that alone which has any existence. <laughs> And then place as a secondary rank with respect to essence all the genre of incorporeal natures, considering the principles of things as having a corporeal form, and evincing that the habit in us by which we know these is corporeal. But others 
spend the next half hour working on that sentence too. <laughs> mm -hmm. But others, suspending indeed all bodies from incorporeal natures and defining the first hyparxis to be in soul and the powers of soul call, as it appears to me, the best of souls gods and denominate the science which proceeds as far as to these and which knows these theology. But such as produce the multitude of souls from another more ancient principle and establish intellect as the leader of whole, these assert that the best end is a union of the soul with intellect and consider the intellectual form of life as the most honorable of all things. They doubtless too consider theology and the discussions of intellectual essence as one and the same. All these, therefore, as I have said, call the first and most sufficient principles of things gods and the science respecting these theology. The divine narration, however, of Plato alone despises all corporeal natures with reference to principles. Because indeed everything divisible and endued with interval is naturally unable either to produce or preserve itself, but possesses its being, energy, and passivity through soul and the motions which soul contains. But Plato demonstrates that the psychical essence, that is to say the essence pertaining to soul, is more ancient than bodies, but is suspended from an intellectual hypostasis. For everything which is moved according to time, <coughs> though it may be self-moved, is indeed of a more ruling nature and things moved by others, but is but posterior to an eternal motion. He shows there, for as we have said, that intellect is the father and cause of bodies and souls, and that all things both subsist and energize about it, which are allotted to life conversant with transitions and evolutions. Plato, however, proceeds to another principle entirely exempt from intellect, more incorporeal and ineffable, and from which all things, even though you should speak of such as our last, have necessarily a subsistence. For all things are not naturally disposed to participate of soul, but such things only as are allotted in themselves in more clear or obscure life. Nor are all things able to enjoy intellect and being, but such only as subsist according to form. But it is necessary that the principle of all things should be participated by all things. If it does not deserve anything, since it is the cause of all things which in any respect are said to have a subsistence. Plato, having divined the discourse, discovered this first principle of poles, which is more excellent than intellect, and is concealed in inaccessible recesses, and having exhibited these three causes and monads, has evinced them to be above bodies, I mean soul, the first intellect, and a union above intellect, produces from these as monads their proper number, one multitude indeed being uniform, but the second intellectual, and the third psychical. For every monad is the leader of a multitude, coordinate to itself. But as Plato connects bodies with souls, so likewise he connects souls with intellectual forms, and these again, with the unities of being. And he converts all things to one imparticipatable unity. And having run back as far as to this unity, he considers himself as having obtained the highest end of the theory of wholes and that this is the truth respecting the gods, which is conversant with the unities of beings, and which delivers their progressions and peculiarities, the contact of beings with them, and the order of forms which are suspended from these uniform hypostases. But he teaches us that the theory respecting intellect and the forms in the genre <laughs> revolving about the intellect is posterior to the science which is conversant with the gods themselves. 
Likewise, that the intellectual theory apprehends intelligibles and the forms which are capable of being known by the soul through the projecting energy of intellect. But that the theological science transcending this is conversant with arcane and ineffable hyparxis and pursues their separation from each other and their unfolding into life from one cause of all. Whence I am of opinion that the intellectual peculiarity of the soul is capable of apprehending intellectual forms and the difference which subsists in them. But that the summit, as they say, flower of intellect and hyparxis, is conjoined with the unities of being, and through these, with the occult union of all the divine unities. For as we contain many Gnostic powers, through this alone we are naturally capable of being conjoined with and participating in this occult union. For the genius of God cannot be apprehended by sense, because it is exempt from all bodies, nor by opinion and dianoia, for these are divisible and come into contact with multiform concerns nor by intelligence in conjunction with reason, for knowledge of this kind belongs to true beings. But the hyparxis of the gods rides on beings and is defined according to the union itself of whole. It remains, therefore, if it be admitted that a divine nature can be in any respect known, that it must be apprehended by the hyparxis of the soul, and through this, as far as is possible, be known. We say that everywhere, things similar can be known by the similar. Uh, for example, the sensible by sense, the doxastic by opinion, the dianoetic by dianoia, the intelligible by intellect. So that the most uniform nature must be known by the one, and the ineffable by that which is ineffable. In Four dollars. Well, I'm raising the price. We have an even more Want to go to the end? Tell me a page. Yeah, <laughs> Indeed, Socrates in the first Alcibiades rightly observes that the soul entering into herself will behold all other things and deity itself. For virtue to her own union and to the center of all life, laying aside multitude and the variety of all the manifold powers which she contains, she ascends to the highest watchtower of beings. And, it, and as in the most holy of the mysteries, they say that the mystics, at first meet with the multiform and many-shaped genre which are hurled forth before the gods, but on entering the interior parts of the temple, unmoved and guarded by the mystic rites, they generally receive in their bosom divine illumination and divest it of their garments, as they would say, participate of a divine nature, the same mode as it appears to me takes place in the spect a speculation of whole. For the soul, when looking at things posterior to itself, beholds the shadows and images of being. But when she converts herself to herself, she evolves her own essence and the reasons which she contains. And at first, indeed, she only, as it were, beholds herself. But when she penetrates more profoundly into the knowledge of herself, she finds in herself both intellect and the orders of being. When, however, she proceeds into her interior recesses, into the aditum, as it were, of the soul, she perceives with her eye closed the genus of the gods and the unities of beings. For all things are in us psychically, and through this we are naturally capable of knowing all things by exciting the powers and the images of holes which we contain. And this is the best employment of our energy to be extended to a divine nature self, having our powers at rest, to revolve harmoniously round it, to excite all the multitude of the soul to this union, and laying aside all such things as are posterior to the one, to become seated and conjoined with that which is ineffable and beyond all things. For it is lawful for the soul to ascend 
till she terminates her flight in the principle of things. But arriving thither, beholding the place which is there, descending thence and directing her course through beings, likewise evolving the multitude of forms, exploring their monads and their numbers, and apprehending intellectually how each is suspended from its proper unity, then we may consider her as possessing the most perfect science of divine nature, perceiving in a uniform manner the progressions of the gods into beings and the distinctions of beings about the gods. Such then, according to Plato's decision, is our theology, and theology is a habit of this kind which unfolds the hyparxis itself of the gods, separates and speculates their unknown and unical life from the peculiarity of their participants and announces it to such as are worthy of this energy, which is both blessed and comprehends all things at once. That's a uh, theologist. But there's not <laughs> many of those two terms. <laughs> <have. laughs> <laughs> at the back of this book, by the way, we put a, as you can see, <laughs> an application. <laughs> the, the, the theology oh, club, the union of, <laughs> union of theology. <laughs> You may, you may, of course, have to bring your own affidavits. Is that the, um, in other words, the philosopher during his age, so that he could get by the church? I didn't get the last part of what you said. So that he could get by the church. I just wondered, this is theology today. Struck me that it was also a characteristic of, of a philosopher, but he wasn't using that term. Yeah. That's this guy Shaw's thesis. I just saw so in the old pamphlet. That was a real platonic term. God. The bone to the Christian. The bone to the Christian is they become theologists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It might be, I mean, it is of interest, I think, that. Um, on that issue of genesis yeah. and on page 9 when he talks about as in the most holy of the mysteries they say that the mystery at first meet with the multiform and many shaped genera mm -hmm. that is the genesis there just for one of the uses the same the same word. Word. Mm -hmm. and at the bottom where they talk at the bottom of that paragraph where he talks about the genus of the gods that's genos which is uh -huh. commonly translated generation that's a distinction. Word. 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 Word.